There are multiple aggregation functions in Excel and few of them are popular choice because of its ease of use and some apps would probably rank as one of the top ones in terms of popularity. However, there are a set of database functions which are highly effective in certain scenarios but are truly underrated. Today, we will see an effective application of the div sum function and in what scenario does the dsum function is a far better choice than the sum apps. Let's go. Welcome everyone to Pivotal Stats, where we talk about data analysis techniques, business intelligence platforms, and much, much more. So let's go. Hey everyone. So today we are going to use an employee attrition data set, uh, which I downloaded from Kaggle. Links will be in the description. We have two requirements for today. And as you might have already understood from the introduction, uh, we're going to compare SUMFs and DSUM function, which is a database function within Excel. And we'll see in which scenario it is better to use DSUM instead of SUMFs. For today's requirements, there are two main requirements for us. First one, we have to sum the employee count column when uh, the department will be equal to sales and education field will be equal to life sciences. Okay, that's the first requirement. Second requirement is we have to apply two sub conditions within this second requirement. First sub condition is when attrition is equal to yes, business travel equal to travel rarely, uh, department is equal to sales and med uh, education field is equal to medical. And the second condition is when attrition is equal to yes, business travel is equal to non-travel, department is equal to human resources and education field is equal to technical degree. So we have to get the output from both of these sub condition and then show an summed up value from both of them so that we see the employee count for both of those sub conditions together in one cell okay sum of the employee count now for the first requirement where we had to you know just get the employee count based on department column and education field column it's a classic case of sum is function where we can use it and have our output pretty quickly so let me just quickly apply this sum ifs sum range will be employee count criteria range first range will be department and we want sales in it second criteria range will be education field and here we would like to have life sciences okay now, although the formula is straightforward, I will still explain it so that it's easier for the beginners to grasp the concept. Uh, the first part of the formula, which is this, is simply asking us to give it a sum range, the column that we want to sum, in this case, the employee count column. The second parameter that we have here is for criteria range. Uh, this is for the first criteria range uh, where we will highlight the department column because that's our first criteria where department equal to sales. The third parameter is nothing but the actual criteria, which in this case is sales. And then the following parameter uh, is just a repetition of the uh, earlier parameter, second and third, but with a different condition. So H column contains the education field column and uh, the criteria for that field would be life sciences that we would require. right? So with that, we got an answer of 150. So first requirement, requirement is done, right? It was simple enough, right? Now coming to the second requirement, this is where it gets tricky and this is where the database function dsum has an added advantage over sum ifs. Don't get me wrong here by the way, this requirement can be completed using sum ifs but it is going to be a battle for of its own to write and then maintain for any future reference. Let me show you an example by solving this same requirement, the second requirement with a sum ifs first. Okay, so I'm going to write a sum ifs. Since there are two sub conditions, we would have to apply two separate sum ifs within this cell and then add them within SL, right? So what I'm going to do is sum if uh, first requirement was the sum range is obviously employee count. The second parameter would be the criteria one, which is uh, cell uh, rather column B and wherein we want to say yes. Okay, I'm going to expand this formula bar so that it's easier for me to enter. And I'm going to enter within 
this and then criteria range 2 will be C column where we're gonna say travel rarely then uh, would be our E column which will say sales and then H column which is for medical okay now our requirement does not end here so as I said we have we would have to write two summit function to cater to both the subconditions right the so first condition we have met subcondition we have met and the second subcondition will be added uh, to the main one right to the first one so I'm gonna just copy paste the first sum ifs and instead of the earlier criteria I'm just, I'm just gonna change it to non-travel department will be human resources and then the education field will be technical degree okay fair enough now we have we're gonna enter this value here and I've got a sum of both those subconditions as 11 right now imagine having to do this with 10 more separate subcondition it will be a nightmare to write and manage right now let me share an uh, alternate method which will be much easier than using sum ifs in such conditions which will be dsem okay we're gonna use dsem instead now now before writing your formula for dsem there is one preparation that we need to do the criteria or the condition that you want to enter within dsem you would have to create a separate range here like i have entered it like this right so in this cell and just to follow along you can do the same uh, just so that the formula you can enter the same formula that i'm entering and it will work just fine uh, in cell in range n to q i've entered these four columns uh, where i have to i want to apply those conditions and then i've just simply entered the condition so the first one was yes travel rarely sales and medical and the second condition subcondition was yes non-travel human resource and technical degree right so I've just simply entered it here and now I'm going to use the D sum function. Okay. So I'm going to say D equal to D sum. It's asking for the database. The first parameter is database. In this case, my database is nothing but this entire table range, the raw data. Uh, then it's asking for the field. Now there are two options in this. Now I can write the number of the field. Uh, so from the start it's the 11th column I can write 11 or else I can also write the column header so in this case employee count okay and the criteria is just this table and I'm just gonna select this table and that's it my formula is done and I'm getting the same result. Now if you compare these two formulas, right? You will you will get to know the difference, right? Why in this scenario, I would prefer using a D sum instead of a sum Fs, right? So now if you want to add more condition or criteria, then you just have to increase the number of columns in the criteria section here, right? In this column, and then change that table uh, formula range from Q3 to R, let's say for example, or in case you want to add some additional criteria, then you just have to add the criteria in the below row and it will automatically get catered to this uh, formula with very minimum changes that needs to be done. So when you add a new row, just have to increase the row count here. That's it. And your formula will work just fine. So that is it. I hope uh, now you understood the difference between sum ifs and d sum and now you will be in a better position to use either one of them in any given scenario during your analysis process or during any reporting process. So let me know in the comment section if you found this helpful and do remember to subscribe to the channel. See you in the next one. Thank you.